All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Game Changing Connections presented by AT&T. Let's start with UConn. We just mentioned her, Paige Beckers, and her teammate, Aaliyah Edwards. They were impressive yesterday, Alexa. Yeah, it's really been this whole tournament, or if you want to go back even further the whole season, but when the two of them are playing like they have been, that makes UConn really a Final Four contender. And I know Aaliyah didn't have a great game offensively, maybe by her standards. Paige Beckers took a lot of that load, but defensively she, she was really critical. She made clutch plays at the right time so I'm really eager to see how that matchup also looks when they play against Duke coming up yeah five straight games with 25 plus points uh, for Paige Becker she has been impressive I think a lot of people have kind of forgotten about Paige a little bit we're talking about you know Caitlin Clark and what she's doing of course what South Carolina is doing but Paige with all the injuries people have like kind of forgotten about just how great of a player she is and how dangerous this UConn team can be all right moving on over to UCLA Kiki Rice uh, and Lauren Betts and other maybe um I don't know, maybe uh, an underestimated duo in, in college basketball this year? Yeah, I think, I mean, UCLA took some hits in conference play, but of course they're in the Pac-12, and the Pac-12 was the best league in the country this year. But when they get that inside-out play between Lauren, that's doing what she does inside, and then whether or not it's Kiki Rice or even Charisma Osborne, honestly, being able to do what they do from the perimeter or getting downhill, then I think UCLA really is a Final Four contender. I have them right now in my bracket in the national title game, but obviously they'd have to get through LSU and then potentially Iowa. So that's a really tough road. But again, Kiki Rice, when she's playing at their at her best, I think really elevates the ceiling of this UCLA squad. UCLA trailed by 10 points in the third quarter last night against Creighton. That was a great, great second round game there. Uh, over in L.A. Notre Dame uh, was a team that we had some injury concerns about going into the tournament. They lost Kylie Watson. They have had some post-trouble this year. But fear not, the big three, Sonia Citron, uh, Hannah Hidalgo, of course, and, and Westbelt, they have kind of taken everything on their shoulders. This is a – when they are playing well, it's, it's tough to beat them. Right. There's a note in, uh, here that Notre Dame is 7-0 yeah. and this season when Westbelt, Hidalgo, and Citron all score 15-plus points. So that means you have a little bit of a thin margin for victory, but yeah. we, we know there's other teams in the tournament like that. You really can't say enough. I, I was concerned, I think, about whether or not Notre Me Dame too. could withstand yeah. just having such a limited rotation and yet another injury. But you really can't say enough about the job that those players have done, just rolling with what they have. And Yale Ivy, from a coaching standpoint, getting her team back to the Sweet 16. And Yale Ivy and Gino, I think. I mean, you talk about two teams yeah. that are severely hampered by injuries, yet they both uh, are on their way to uh, the Sweet 16. All right, Juju Watson and Kenzie Forbes. Um, they needed everything they could to get past Kansas. It got away a little bit towards the end of it. Um, what do you like from, from those two players? Right. Mackenzie Forbes, I think, is playing some of her best basketball. This was the first stretch of her career where she scored 20 games uh, for three consecutive contests. And when she's able to take a little bit of the pressure off Juju in terms of you know, scoring output, that will help them a ton. But it's also the UCL, UC, or sorry, USC role players who do a little bit of everything, whether or not that's defense or rebounding. I mean, Clarice Akunwafo had a really tremendous second half, and that was a key for them to unlock the Kansas zone. And so when the role players are doing their roles, when they're getting some good production from Mackenzie Forbes, and then obviously when Juju's doing her thing, that – they're, that's why they're playing their best basketball at the right time right now. You look at every one seed, and I got the bracket right in front of me. South Carolina, Texas, Iowa, USC. Historically, the NCAA tournament is a place where veterans have success, senior players, right? But every single one of the one seeds rely heavily on freshmen. How do you think that their experience or lack thereof may play into – their success overall as we progress throughout the tournament. Is that even a story? Yeah, I think for me, my initial kind of impression would be that if you're relying too much on freshmen, then that can be a, at a fault when you're at the biggest stage of the season, the lights are the brightest, and you don't know how they're going to react in that moment. But we know some of these freshmen, like the Jujus and the Hannahs and the Madison Bookers of the world, they have these moments where they're shown that they can transcend that, and now they haven't faced the biggest stage of the season yet, so we don't typically we don't actually know like whether that can happen. But they there's there's something special about them: an understanding of the moment, an ability to make big plays when it matters most, to put their teams on the back on their back. So I would not be totally shocked if if they're able to to deliver in a you know sweet 16 or an elite game when that you know maybe they have to come back from a big deficit or that you know there's another team's making a late yeah. run and they have to hold them at arm's length but also 
you just don't know because they're freshmen at the same time. So I'm really eager. That's what I'll be watching over the next week to see how that plays out. To your point, regardless, the state of women's college basketball could not be in a better place with the stars that are on these teams and making the most of their moments here in March. I think I think the game is in a great place and clearly it has showed through the ratings so far. That puts a bow on the first and second rounds, but we got a lot more basketball to play. And we- 